Hi, I'd like to welcome you to episode two of Mastering E3 series. And yes, I do hope the title does stick. So in episode one, we took you through how to set up a project. In episode two, we're gonna take you through bringing in parts from the database to then do your electrical drawing. So within E3, we use an object oriented data structure, which allows for integrity and consistency of data. Now, what does these lovely words mean? Basically allows us when we're going from start to finishing a project, so to production, whenever we make a change in our project, we can trust that that change will run throughout the entire project because when we place a block in a drawing, there is some smartness about it. It is a clever part. Um, so it's not just a graphical representation. However, in E3, we can also do graphical representations. These are called symbols, okay? So if I show you my screen now, now, in E3, as you can see, I'm going to open up sheet one. And to start with, I'm going to show you through how to bring in a connector. So connectors are brought in differently depending whether you're running E3 schematic or whether you're running E3 cable. With E3 schematic, we can only have single pin symbols, but with an E3 cable, we can also have a single pin representing all of the parts on the connector. So I'm going to go into my database, and anybody who's in data, uh, a training course with me will know that my favorite parts are Deutsch connectors because they're all set up in my library correctly. And yes, I'm still waiting for my sponsorship deal. So if I go to Deutsch, I'm gonna pick my DTO44P because it is my, uh, my lovely and faithful part. I'm then gonna pick the option of place. If I place it onto my schematic, as so, as we can see, I've now bought in a DTO for 4P and it is 4 slash 4 with a little star next to it. So all four of these pins represent that connector. What I can also do is, is go right click and play single pins. And in doing so, I would then show them as individual pins of that connector, which I could then connect to. Finally, I could then go into my DTO for 4P and bring in, let's say, just pin 1. Okay. Now this is pin one of uh, X3, which is my device designation. Now it's really important guys, um, that we then don't go, okay, I want pin two and bring in it from here. Cause as we can see, we have generated a new device. So in E3, a really important uh, shortcut to know is control click. So if I control click on a part, I will then find it in my device tree. So the device tree is how we navigate through the project and then how we know what parts exist. As we can see here, I've now bought in pin two from X4 and not from X3. So I'm gonna delete X4 from my project and I'm gonna bring in pins two. So that's how I would do that. Now, throughout your project, I would also recommend every so often running a purge. What a purge will do is it will remove all unplaced objects in your device tree, apart from terminal strips, okay? Because in terminal strips, you may want to have a few spare terminals if we need to make a change in the future. This will be done under purge terminal strip directly on it, okay? So what I would do is I go right click, do a purge. You can then choose which options you want to purge, press okay, and then it will do a tidy up of your project. So that's connectors. The next part, also with connectors, sorry, we could also bring in mating connectors apart. So if I say I bring in a multi-connect onto X2, if I do this here, now I know it's a DTM06, and yes, I do know that's not the correct connector, but this is part of the train that I did, and I show people how to add additional parts onto DTO44P. So if I go onto that connector, and if I go to my device properties, and go to the pins tab, I can then show that I've got an activated connector. And I've also got it set up as a DTO6. I just say you can have multiple different ones, okay? So for all of you hardcore electrical fans out there, don't worry, I do know and I am aware, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to bring in a contactor, okay? So a contactor is just a generic symbol. So if I go into my library, I'm gonna go pick a contactor, pick it here, and I'm gonna pick the first one I see. This is CON2M2NC. So if I bring it in, so in E3, we can have multiple symbols associated with one device. So if I bring in this part here, so I'm gonna bring in this one here. Now, this is what we would call a reference symbol in E3. So if I try to connect to it, there are no options, okay? But what it does show is where all the parts associated with it live. So I've control clicked on Q1 there to find it in my device tree, and I can place symbols associated with it. So this is the coil. And as we can see, it's then also then gonna start bringing up the reference coordinates of where they live on the sheet. So that's a normally open contact. And you can place various parts like this, okay? Which is very useful for placing parts in E3. Now, the next one, is placing blocks. Now, blocks are one of my favorite things in E3 because, uh, so in my experiences, uh, my job as an electrical design engineer was to get my 12 volts or whatever current you want from A to B, okay? In order to do that, we'd use some copper, so we'd use some wire to get from place to place. When it came to the schematic, I would be more interested in having a block just to show what a component is, okay? Because that wasn't the pit that I was necessarily focused on. So with an E3, we can bring in blocks. So if I go insert, I can then bring in a dynamic block here, 
Okay, so then you can give it the information. You can also create them from files. So if you export information from a electronic CAD software, so you import a PCB, you can do that in a block format. So I press OK and I place my block. I've now got a block here called A1. Now, what is my block? My block could be a phone. My block could be an aeroplane. My block could be a tank. My block could be a car. My block could be a sensor. My block could be a transducer. It can be anything, okay? So if I go onto my device properties, and I, here I've got function, let's just call it a four to 20 uh, milliamp, uh, milliamp sensor, okay? There you go, I've added a sensor into my project. Now it's important with these parts that they are not brought in on a bill of material in E3 unless they are a database block. So on top of this, if I just zoom out a second, now I'm going to go into my database. Now I have a few oddly named parts in my database because I like the idea if you can give it a silly name, it can't be that hard to make. Um, so if I pick up a uh, block here uh, called Mike, okay, Mike's a great guy, um, <laughs> and we place it here. As we can see, I've got a transducer here that I've set up. If I control click on Mike, I've also got a connector associated with him. So if I go right click place single pins, I can place it onto the border like so. Okay. Now if I have a database block, I can also set the signals associated with it. So if I go onto that connector and go to symbols, and in that I go to BL underscore ST underscore SIG. So ST is male, obviously, and BU is obviously female. Um, and I would say this, you will be able to find it in your manual, okay, if you have issues finding out which pins are which. And they're going to choose that as a signal. So this has signals preset in the database. So it's then bought those in and showing them on the device. So that's blocks. Um, but you can also add on a connector to this one. So let's go back up to the Deutsch database, which is my favorite place to be. Um, and we pick this one here. And then we pick a detail for 4P, right click, place single pins. You can then place that on the block border. So this is the outside instance. I could also have them placed if I wanted to, showing them inside. So if I bring it out a little bit, and we'll do it on this side, shall we? Uh, there we go. So we can then change how the symbol looks. Okay. That's how to do blocks in E3. Now we can also do subcircuits. So let's say you have a link lead. So I'm going to go down to my training database again, and I should have a component here. So this is going to be called new component 13, which as you can see is a link lead with two connectors. I can just drag and drop that in to my E3 project, which is fantastic. Now, you could also have terminals. So terminals would be quite properly used in E3. So I'm sad and I know the part number for one of the terminals that we use in the training, which is 282601. As we can see, this is a two conductor terminal. If you want to bring in a terminal strip, you go insert multiple. And let's say I want to have a terminal of five. If I press five, I then go, oh, where are they? They actually are in my device tree and I can see that they've been brought in. But in my messages window, I've now got a hyperlink. If I double click on that, I can then find my terminals here. Now to bring them in, I can drag and drop them in one by one, or I could go right click, place one by one, and place all my terminals in my project like so. Now, they look a bit messy, okay? So in order to tidy them up, we would go into the symbol properties, as so, and then we would start turning off attributes with these tick boxes here that we do not want to show. But what I do have is a script that allows me to clean up terminals a bit quicker, which if you contact us and there's an email in the description, um, we can help sort you out with a video on how to set it up and the script itself. And it is called terminal or toggle text, or we call it terminal fix on some of them. If I click that, it then tidies up my terminal strip for me. Now what happens if I wanted to change one of my terminals, okay? If I went to X, uh, for number five, sorry, I went to my device properties, in here I have the component, if I then go to the drop down list, I could change the component to let's say 282604. If I do so, in my device tree, it's changed to 282604. So this is the visualization and that integrity of data. I made the change in the project, so everything changes with it. If I now go onto number five and go to my symbol properties, I can then turn on the component code. And then that allows me to see that is a 282604. And then I can move that into position so then I can connect to it there. Okay, um, now a thing to add with making parts is that when you want to change the designations of them. So if I, let's say, went to my X8 here, if I wanted to change the name of X8 to, let's say, be XT8, if I went on to right-click on when the pins went to device properties, I could then go to change that to be XT8 and press enter. And as shown, I would then change that single pin to be XT8 but the rest of them have not changed. So you need to be careful of this, guys. So if I just undo what I've just did, if you're gonna do that, I would recommend control click, 
and then go to the X8 in the database window. Now on certain keyboards it's F2, or in my case it's Fn F2. You can then change the name here and go XT8, and then they would all change. And then hover over them, that's come XT8, 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 and XT8. Or you can go into device properties and change it here, okay? Don't change it in the symbol properties. Because if I went, let's say, onto this one, went right-click symbol properties as well, I could then change that to be XT9, and then it has created a new terminal strip. And this is the same for connectors. So if I go on to X3, so if I double click that, it then highlights it. In order to reset a highlighting, it's obviously Shift F3, or if you want to find the button, it's reset highlighting there. Now, if I look here on X3, if I control click on it, I can place the other pins if I wanted to. Now, if I want to change the designation of X3, I go right click, device properties, and I would change it here. If you went onto one of the individual pins, I went on to the symbol properties, and let's say I wanted to make this C1, and press OK, it's then going to only change that individual pin to be C1, not the rest of the connector, OK? So name changes are in device properties. If you want to make a change to the symbol or change a bit of text on it, you do it in the symbol properties. And this is really important that you're doing this throughout your drawing. Otherwise, you could have a lot of random connectors, OK? So also, this is the great thing about visualization parts in the device tree. I can see exactly what's going on in my project. An important thing also with connectors, if I've placed it as a single pin view, if I select all those pins and go right click and go to split slash merge connector pins, here I have the option to place as a single pin or place as a pin group. So if I click place as a pin group and press OK, as we can see, I can then merge them into one individual symbol. If I then go right click on symbol properties and then turn back on C1, I can then show them as so. And I could do the inverse. If I then go right click split slash merge connector pins and go place as single pins and press OK, I can then place them as single pins. So I'd just like to thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or feedback on the video that has been delivered, please email the link down below. Um, and if you have any issues with your E3, there'll also be a link to the Zookin website where you'll be able to find out the contact details to the region which serves you. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye bye.